The French and Indian War, part de. You like that? That was French. All right. In 1763, in response to Pontiac's war, the British government said, all right, colonists, enough. You cannot go beyond the Appalachian Mountains. And they created the proclamation line of 1763. And it said, this is for your own good. This is for your own protection. And American colonists really viewed this line as an obstruction to their economic freedom and development. So here are British claims in 1963. Here's the proclamation line running right here. And you can see that this is part of that introductory introduction of parliamentary sovereignty. It sort of very much contradicts the original policy of salutary neglect. So they're reining those colonies back in. And it took place in the midst of a European Enlightenment, which was actually beginning to impact colonial thought. And we've already talked about the ideas of John Locke and the ideas of the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of property that John Locke wrote about in the Enlightenment. And this proclamation line violated those ideas and actually incensed um, particularly uh, the rural poor in the outskirts who were interested in moving further west. Governments are susceptible to corruption and tyranny and an intrusion upon citizens' liberty. Virtuous citizens must fight tyranny wherever they find it. So what, is the con what are the conclusions and sort of the historical significance of the French and Indian War? Well, despite mounting tension by 1763, most Americans were loyal brothers to England because of a shared British culture, a shared language, dependence on British consumer goods, and shared nationalism after the defeat of France. So there you have it, the end of the French and Indian War. However, it does set us up for the revolution with that proclamation line and later with the colonists being taxed to pay for that war, um, you start to see this growth in tensions during this late um, 1700s.